Hello my friends, William Poloniak here from Whole Health Foundation. Today I'm going to make a melon juice, 50% watermelon and 50% honeydew melon. Let's go to the next step. My first step is to cut each piece into manageable slices that will fit into the feed tube. And I'm going to shred the melon with the skin, the seeds and all. The watermelon will cut into slabs instead of strips. And on the watermelon I'm going to discard the skin. Now the first thing I'm going to do is install the near zero blowback cutter. This cutter with over 80 teeth shreds produce 4 degrees centigrade cooler. And that's partly because it does such an efficient job. And you'll notice I'm also using the front loading feed tube. And I'm going to plug in the thermometer and begin feeding in both kinds of melon. Now I want to point out that because I'm using a front loading feed tube you'll never get blowback up to your ceiling so forget about getting the ladder out to climb up and clean your ceiling but you'll notice how fast that cutter sucked in that melon but I want to point out that you have to be very careful to not let this go in too fast and always keep it covered. So I'm feeding in the honeydew. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to save the large slabs of watermelon and press those separately. And what I will do with the smaller pieces is I'm going to feed them through the feed tube. to always keep this covered. And I want to point out again, even though with the front loading feed tube you'll never get blowback up to your ceiling, keep it covered when you do things like melon because it could spit out, hit you in the apron or your face. And one way to minimize that is only go down part way. Next, I'm going to unplug the thermometer clean the grid and clean the feed tube. Now I've seen some feed tubes come into my shop with so much built up um, calcium that it took hours if not days to soak it overnight in water to enable the, the brush to clean it. This brush minimizes your cleanup in later months or years. And I don't know if the camera can see it or not, but you'll see that it's very, very clean when you use a brush. And also use the brush with the cutter. So I'll clean the round escutcheon on the front plate. And either with a wet towel or a spray nozzle like I have in my kitchen, clean the front, reassemble, now you could dry the feed tube, but I let it uh, drip dry, just like you might do with your dishes. Never leave the cutter on the shaft. Always put it up here with the hole facing down to drain. Now I keep my cloths for fruit juice in the freezer until I need them. Then I'll crack the ice on the corner of the counter, take out my two cloths for watermelon. And whenever you do melon, you need some kind of liner. Now we make organic bamboo liners here at Whole Health Foundation, exclusively made from wild bamboo. So the first thing you do is unfold your cloths and then use a sheet of wild bamboo as you put in your watermelon or your honeydew melon. So here we have a roll of a hundred sheets of bamboo. 
boost that. To let her close. Now first we'll put in one piece of watermelon, fold the cloth over, and we're going to reuse these cloths so they're very, very economical. Now I don't know if we can get two cloths full of watermelon in at once, but let's find out. We'll set this aside for now, use another bamboo liner. Pull the cloth over the bamboo, as tight a package as you can make. Now let's see if we can get two of these in there. We might be able to. Always put your uh, tray in on an angle because over time it stretches and you want to be able to get in there easily. So can we get two of them in? Yes, we can, just barely. Very important to center it left to right. Center it front to back and adjust it if need be. All the way back and back it off. Now you can leave it up until you get droplets. So the next step is going to be to put in more slabs of watermelon. And I'll remind you again, don't throw away this biodegradable bamboo cloth. Open it up, put another slab of bamboo in. Um, Open it up, put another slab of watermelon. This time it's going to be too thick to put two in. I can tell that right now. So what I'll do is fold the cloth over and put this in while I fold the other cloth. Make sure the tray's on properly, centered left to right, centered front to back, all the way back, back it off. And while that's pressing, I'm going to fill the other cloth with another slab of watermelon. Keep your eye on this, and when you figure it won't slip apart, advance it a little bit more, and then all the way. Pouring this from the back side so the camera gets a good look. And you'll notice I'm leaving about oh, 8 or 10 percent because I'm going to add distilled water. Most hydraulic press juices are much, much too rich. So you want to add water if you can. And if you like it full strength, by all means do that. Well, here's the last of the shredded pulp. Mostly honeydew and a little bit of watermelon. Now we only have one more cloth, so let's press that now, and then I'm going to show you a little trick with the spent watermelon pulp. In the center of the tray, front to back, adjust if need be, left to right, all the way back, back it off. This already pressed pulp, I'm going to feed it into the feed tube, but first let's put the cutter on. I want to see if there's any more juice left in there. Normally you would press watermelon and not so ripe um, other melons, uh, cut into slabs as I did with this watermelon, but when they're on the very, very ripe side, like this one was, you would uh, shred it as you observed me do in the earlier clips. So let's put this spent pulp into the shredder. Now because it's already been pressed you have to be very very careful it doesn't spit back out at you. So put it in and put the pusher over before you turn it on. And allow the pusher to go in about one inch to feed in more pulp. press these. Pull the tray forward, make sure it's on the press plate properly. That's very, very important. Don't forget. Put the bowl down here and we'll put these two cloths full of 
re-shredded pulp. We didn't shred the watermelon, we only pressed it. This time we shred it. We're going to see, can we get any more juice by shredding the pulp that was left over from the watermelon. So all the way back, back it off a little. Wow, it looks like we're getting a significant amount of juice. Now normally, in the past, we only press the watermelon by cutting into the slabs and pressing it. But here I shred the leftover watermelon pulp and look how much more juice we got. Now I'm going to show you how to get even more juice. What I'm going to do is take this slab of uh, watermelon pulp, take one from before, and form it into a very, very tight ball. I'm going to press it again. Most people would throw this away. Now I'm going to show you how to get at least 10% more juice. Now here we have some pulp that burst out the corners, so what I'm going to do with that is put it right in the center and fold this cloth over it. Nice tight ball. And I'm using a special folding technique here by pulling the cloths together and rolling the cloth under like so. You do this at the end of your juicing. And do that in both directions, folding the cloth under. And we'll do the same with the last of the pulp, putting the other bamboo that we saved from pressing. We're going to form both of those into a tight ball. Now we got 16 ounces here. I'm going to use a measuring beaker to see how much more juice do we get by repackaging the spent pulp into a tight ball. We do not discard it. Let's put it in the press, see how much more juice we get. In the center, left to right, centered front to back. That's very important. You don't want to break your press plate. All the way back, back it off a little, turn on your machine. There's nine ounces, my goodness. Ten ounces. It's almost a full extra bottle of juice. I can see we're not going to get even close to ten bottles, maybe seven or eight. Well, there's seven extra bottles. Let's off with distilled water. You can use filtered water, even bottled water, or even tap water if your community has pure water. So let's cap these off and then we'll do a taste test. Well, my friends, here we have honeydew melon and watermelon, both very ripe. So let's see what it tastes like. Oh, it's very, very sweet. I think because they were very ripe, they became very, very sweet. I hope you like what you've seen, my friends. And if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to call me, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust at cox.net and my webpage is wholehealthon.com. See you in the next video. Oh, that's delicious.